there is the great war known as Harb al Basus. Now, this, <laughs> this is a drama in and of itself. <laughs> right, let's, uh, if you want drama. <laughs> You see, there's so much to say about this, but okay, let me give you a quick snapshot first, and I might give some details. A snapshot, this was a war that lasted for 40 years. It's from the Ayyam al-Arab, 40 years, right? And it's named Al-Harb -harb al-Basus, and Basus you think, well, what is Basus? <laughs> Basus is the name of a lady. And no, it's not a romantic kind of like a like Troy. It's not that kind of war. Um, for some reason. Uh, right. So it's not one of those. What it is, it's actually over a camel. <laughs> there you go. You wanted romance. So. And it's amazing that the, the events that transpire in this story because it just begins with it's not actually over a camel it's over uh, this kind of rivalry and this ego and there's this there's this king by the name of Kulay and this is actually in the Arabian Peninsula and he's from uh, Arabia and uh, which is from Wa'il th this tribe yeah so the point is he's from this tribe he becomes the king but he is quite ruthless and he does all these kind of wars and people don't like him and but you know some do and he has this brother that they call Zir Salim <laughs> and and this is another thing how he is known as Muhalhil and um, and he's the first person to write lengthy odes these kind of Arabic qasidas qasaid these long poems first person to do it was him He's known as Zir Salim. They call him Zir because he's just, he's, he comes from Zir and Nisa because he's just love women. <laughs> and the term, those of you that have heard it, Zir and Nisa, and he was just an absolute playboy and just, just spent his time in booze and women. That's it. Always drunk, always with women. And that was just his 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 thing, and he was quite he was very talented. As in, he had a lot of talent. He was very brave. He was, in fact, there's stories of his brother trying to have him killed off, <laughs> Kuleib, because he thinks he has been hitting on his wife, whose name is Jalila, and uh, he hadn't. I mean, whether he had or not, I don't know, but. Um, so he tries to come up with all these things that, oh, I need this. I need you to, we need the milk of a lioness to cure this. And we need this. And there's all these kind of epics where he goes out and he actually gets it done. And he's he's meant to get killed, but he keeps coming back. <laughs> this huge, but yet once he comes back and does his duty, he'll just be drunk with alcohol and just surrounded by women. And <laughs> as far as the good life goes. And so, what happens is Kuleib, um, he asks his wife, this Jalila, who's meant to be one of the most beautiful women in the time, uh, who has some issues with him. She, He asks her once that who is the most, mm, who's the top don of the Arabs? <laughs> He's like, don't say my name straight away. I'll let you take a breath or two before you say it. <laughs> so she comes out with her brother's name, Jassas. So that's his brother-in-law now. So naturally, it hurt the ego, man, this one. So he just let it be. He let it slide. I let this one slide, man. So then what happens is after whatever, some while, um, Jalila is trying, she's saying this provocatively, by the way, because she and her brother just says, they don't like him. They don't like this guy, Kuleib, and he's the king, but they don't like him. And whilst they, they have this kind of bickering and gossiping and, you know, backbiting kind of sessions going on, what the aunt comes to stay with, uh, with her brother, and the aunt's name is Basus. So this is Basus. She turns up, and, you know, like a good old aunt, she comes to add all the masala that was missing. 
<laughs> she goes, oh, that Kuleib needs to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know what? You need to push this button, push that button. No. So what happens is a while later, Jalila um, ends up having a conversation and she provokes Kuleib again. She says, oh, yeah, yeah, but my just sass, my brother, he's just like on another level. So he's had enough. So what he does is when he leaves the home, he sees that Basus, the aunt, <laughs> the aunt that's visiting, she's there and sh and she's brought with her a camel. And the camel's got a, um, a fossil in Arabic, we call it, a, a, a baby camel. <laughs> I'm not sure what the technical term is. So it's got this... Uh, this uh this infant camel with it and the infant camel is just kind of going around on the fields so what he does is he takes out his arrow and he just shoots it and he and he says well he thinks he thinks what are you going to do about it so he leaves it he goes obviously people are triggered but they just they choose to ignore and he is quite ruthless Kuleib. so what happens is he comes back to them and provokes them he says hey so he says, so what's happening with the, <laughs> he says, what, so what's with the dead camel? <laughs> so they know that he's trying to provoke them. So, and they're very witty. So they say, well, oh yeah, we're grateful. Now check this for perspective. They say, we're actually grateful um, because you've actually spared up the milk of the mother for us. So, hey, more milk for us. <laughs> perspective, huh? Perspective. So. He thinks what? Acha, 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 acha. Hamka vo So he says, he says acha. So more milk for you. So what he does is he the the her camel Basus's camel. He shoots it where the udder is, and it kind of ruins. Goes the arrow, the spear, whatever it is. It goes through and it damages the udder. So it's it's useless. It's either going to die, or even if it doesn't, it can't give milk. So at this stage, their tribe, the, these people, they, 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 they're all ultimately related, but here they're known as the Bakreen. Um, they, they don't know what to do. So they're trying to keep a cool mind. Just us is saying, look, let it be, forget it. We don't want to fight him. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. And the Basus is like, nah, you know, she's she's really adding the masala. She's saying, oh, my God, what kind of a useless nephew are you? Only if, if only there were real men here. Ha, 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 if only. And so she starts saying all this poetry. You know, back then, <laughs> the aunts, when they would kind of whine and moan, they would do it in poetry. <laughs> so she just say like a, 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 a 50 line poem. <laughs> wrap her way through it. So eventually there's some other altercations happen and Jassas kills Kuleib, he kills the king. And it's amazing in this story, you had Zir Salim, who is a just an utter playboy. He's like somebody who's, he's very talented, but he's he's just withering away in luxuries of life and just indulgent, extremely indulgent. And this hits him so much that people say that if only there was somebody that would take avenge the death of Kuleib. And Kuleib, before he dies, he uh, apparently kind of writes on some rock that do not kind of compromise with them. And so Zir Salin turns into this ruthless warrior I mean, he was already a warrior. I mentioned the stories that they used to send him to do all this. And he wages this relentless campaign of bloodshed. I mean, he's from the Taglibin, the, the, the tribe, against the Bakariin. Relentless. And this goes on no matter how many people try to intervene. There's a very famous Arab known as Al-Harith ibn Ubad, who's also related to the Bakriyin, but he, he's one of the major don, like they say, one of the most kind of uh, heroes of ancient Arabs. And so is this Zir Salim is one of them as well. But Harith is meant to be this kind of huge legend who's older than Zir Salim, but he he kind of keeps neutral and he doesn't 
pick a side. And in fact, you know, this is where that famous statement comes because remember when I mentioned that Quleib kills the camel of Basus. So Jassas initially had said, look, we don't want to kill, we don't want a war, we don't want to fight him, but what I'll do is I'll kill his camel, which is called Alal, which doesn't happen, and he ends up eventually just killing him and triggers this war. But when Harith ibn Ubad, this, this kind of other hero, this super uh, mega kind of warrior of that tribe, is asked by Zir Salim, are you with us or are you against us? And his famous statement, which till today is used in Arabic, he said that he says this war, la naqata li fiha wa la jamal. He said that the camel, like I don't have a single camel in in this war. Naqa is a female camel and Jamal is a male camel. Because Basus's camel was a naqa that was killed. And Jasas was supposed to kill that Jamal. So he says, look, I don't have a camel in this matter. And he says, I'm just going to keep neutral. And he does up until eventually Zir Salim, because Zir Salim is on this rampage. And it goes on for 40 years. Bloodshed and bloodshed and nobody. And the amount of... Um, offers and they ask Harith, this this other warrior that I mentioned to mediate and he tries because he's this huge figure in ancient Arabia and he says to him look take and this is interesting because one of the things he says to him is don't the Arabs say he says the Arabs -arab, that he says the Arabs have said that a soul for a soul he says look We'll give you the person responsible. We'll give you one person. You just, you can have him. What is this? You've Thousands have been killed. Orphans upon orphans have been left and widows. And, and it's going on for years. Like, let's say this is 10 years into this battle, 10 whole years. Like, imagine going back 10 years in your own lifetime <laughs> where you were 10 years forward. Imagine 20 years back 20, and you're only halfway. And they, when Harith ibn Ubad said to him that, look, haven't the Arabs said that a soul for a soul will give you the person, will give you a person that's responsible? These are just innocent people. You're just killing. And he said, Lam Arab He said, the Arabs never said this. He said, this is what the Jews have said. This ain't the law of the Arabs. Now, it's interesting, you see, because this war goes on for 40 years and eventually everybody has aged <laughs> and people have died in the, in, en masse and people have, and everybody's tired. And right in the very, I mean, near the end, Harith ibn Ubad joins in as well because uh, his son, Bujaid, gets killed and he, although he tries to keep calm, they insult him because he thinks that now that you've killed my son, you're going to call it quits. And when they tell him that he killed your son, they say Zir Salim just slit his throat. And he says, may Allah have mercy on my son that he at least did sulah between these two tribes. He kind of did, a, he got brought them together. And they say, no. They say, do you know what he commented? He said, this is for bishisa in na'ali kulayb. He said, this is for the shoelace <laughs> of kulayb. Like, like basically that's the part that you've wiped out the shoelace and this as you can imagine it obviously he lost he lost the plot uh at this point harith who was an old man but he was still a super warrior he enters the fight as well and it's an and it goes on and people are massacred and goes on for years and eventually even Jassas is killed right at the end and it's this is, this is an interesting plot twist that his own the Kuleib's son, his, his wife at the time was pregnant. She she gives birth to a boy who grows up with the uncle, Jassas, thinking that's his father. Only later on in life to realize this guy murdered my father. So he makes a plot with Zir Salim to assassinate um, his own father, Jassas, and thereby bringing eventually after 40 years this war it finally begins to simmer and quietens and then just dies a death. And right at the very end, you see, when you, and Zir Salim himself, 
he uh, he's known as Muhalhil as well. That's his kind of he has a, a, a name. He goes by a, a title, and he then just goes off. And there's different stories. Uh, some say he's just kind of sent off to some kind of remote place, and he has two slaves, and and they <laughs> and they execute him. <laughs> They've had enough of him. So these two slaves decide to execute him, and and they write this. Um, and he says to them, he knows they're going to execute him. So he says, you know what? He says, OK, but you got to give this poem back. There's a poem. I want you to just say this. And it's a very simple line. He just says, uh, Man mublighil hayyaini anna, he says, Man mublighil hayyaini anna muhalhilan lillahi darrukuma wa darr abikuma. So now this it doesn't really make any sense it just means who will tell the people the two tribes about muhalhil may god praise you and so they say all right fine and they go back and they they kill him and they tell this is zir salim the 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 one who went on this ruthless rampage for 40 years and and then they tell his family oh he died a natural death <laughs> we buried him and he said they say he had a poem <laughs> and the poem was uh, 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 and and the door um his niece Kuleib's daughter she's like one of these oracles in ancient arabia so she catches out and says that aha that's wrong she says do you know that's an incomplete poem and she completes it and she says that man anna who will tell the 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 people that muhalhil um qatilun fil fala no adha qatilan fil falati munjadilan that has ended or remains dead or has come to become dead lying like laid out in in the desert Lillahi darrukuma wa darru abikuma, that, that was may God bless you. La yabrahal abdani hatta yuktala. That don't let these two slaves go until they are executed. So she is this kind of oracle. Anyway, an interesting story, and those who are into Arabic. But my point was that you had this countless, relentless war going on, killing of people, and nobody would just stop because they he would say no. Now, this was the backdrop, and these were the figures that, that, that create the landscape of Arabia following after a few generations in which Islam arises. So at that time, it then instates that Jewish law, the Mosaic law, that, and in the Torah, Allah says that wafiha, we have written, anna nafsa bin nafs. That a nafs is with the, with by a nafs, that a soul for a soul. And Allah says that the person who has been um if the person's been killed wrongly, then his his family have they have certain rights and but they are not allowed to transgress. But you now all of a sudden this starts to make so much more sense that hmm, like you understood it before anyway, but now it fits in to the greater landscape so i i got distracted sharing that <laughs> got distracted sharing that story but it's it's good you know it's uh, these things are known as ayyam al arab the history of the arabs uh, and it's about the wars but they they are interesting because they give you a backdrop to what was going on and in the cl the climate in which islam then arises